The new Onslaught Horde mode on Legend difficulty is one of the most fun, rewarding, and loot-filled experiences Destiny has seen in a very long time, and today I'm going to tell you every single tip imaginable to guarantee your success in pursuit of Wave 50 clears. First things first, by far the easiest map and race to play for a level 50 clear is Vostok with Hive. I've probably done over 30 rounds of Midtown thinking it would be the easiest map due to all of its choke points, but it only took me two runs on Vostok, one with Fallen and one with Hive, to immediately realize it was miles easier due to better choke points, better decoy placement options, and a more open skybox for easier battery throws to the ADU from far away. And while you can't specifically select what race you get when launching Legend Onslaught, you can just continue to relaunch until you land on Hive. However, Fallen wasn't that much harder in my experience anyway, so ultimately, it's up to you. What you will have to deal with no matter what race you get though, is the occasional Tormentor Augment spawn that can turn an otherwise perfect run into an orbit screen pretty quickly. Thankfully, I have two ways for you to make Tormentors literally useless. The first is to have one dedicated player obtain the aggro of the Tormentor and bait him away from the waves of spawning enemies, playing Ring Around the Rosy with him while your other two teammates hold the choke points of oncoming enemy waves. The second option, which to some degree is an extension of the first, is to try to bait the Tormentor into a decoy that will hold its undivided attention for literal minutes. Yes, the decoys can technically be destroyed after a while, but it takes the Tormentor so long to kill it that you'll be done with the typical waves of enemies long before he beats through the decoy's health bar, allowing you to clean him up at your leisure at the end of the round. It is for this reason also that I think Vostok is much easier than Midtown, as in all three ADU locations, the Tormentor will always spawn directly on top of where the map allows you to place decoys, meaning that oftentimes you don't even have to drag him into one as he will just automatically snap to it. And speaking of defenses, in my personal opinion, the defense tier list from best to worst is decoys on top, followed closely by turrets, then a couple of banana peels around the ADU so the enemies trip and fall while closing in on it, and then tripwires. <laughs> Almost all of the decoy locations on Vostok are in the perfect spots to intercept the enemies on their pathing and literally save runs from the unlucky Tormentor augment spawns. The turrets don't deal particularly noticeable damage until they are fully upgraded, at which point they are decent, but not better than decoys in my opinion. And seriously, do not waste your scrap on trip mines. They are that useless compared to the other two upgrades. And remember that you get extra scrap when throwing ADU batteries at a fully healthy ADU, meaning that there is never a reason not to scavenge and deposit them when it is safe to do so. Now, the defense purchase and upgrade phase occurs at the end of any round ending in the number 0, 3, or 6. It's worth noting that rounds ending at 0 will always be Pyramid boss rounds, rounds ending at 6 will always be Pyramid rift dunk rounds, and rounds ending in 3 will always be a typical horde wave in the main map. Use this information to spend your scrap accordingly. Furthermore, heavy ammunition crates that spawn when successfully completing a bonus event, such as capturing a pyramid point, collecting moats, killing splinters, or defeating a speed round quickly, will automatically despawn at the end of any buy phase, boss round, or 15 seconds after someone on the fire team pulls heavy from the crate. You can use this information to coordinate with your team on when to pull heavy at the most opportune time. For example, if you are on wave 33 and have a heavy crate available, it's best to spam all of your heavy on that round and scavenge the crate at the end as the crate will despawn at the end of the buy phase following that round anyway. Make sure not to be too stingy with pulling the heavy crate though, as well in theory if it spawned on a wave ending in 6 for example, yes it would last all the way until you enter the boss portal at the next wave ending in 0, 
but saving it until then is effectively wasting it as you always get a rally flag before the boss and that heavy crate will be gone once you take the portal back into the main arena after the boss anyway. It is for that reason that it would be significantly more fruitful to scavenge the crate at the end of the round ending in 7 or 8 instead. Getting into the general combat section, having a strong build is everything when it comes to being successful in your onslaught runs, which is why I highly recommend that you subscribe to my YouTube channel as I post build guide videos regularly so that you can take the guesswork out of trying to find something that is guaranteed to perform well. And when it comes to builds, it's also worth noting that you can switch your build right before a boss phase thanks to the rally flag right before it. Going from an Orpheus Rig Tether Hunter, which is perfect for the wave defense portion of Onslaught for example, over to a Celestial Nighthawk Golden Gun that is better suited to nuke the boss. Bonus points if you slap on a chest piece with triple reserves mods for your heavy weapon as well to get extra ammo when rallying, after which you can swap back to your other chest armor. But as much as everyone wants to nuke bosses in 5 seconds, in Onslaught there really isn't any need to, especially if it requires you to empty all of your heavy ammunition. Remember that there is no guaranteed source of heavy ammo at the end of a boss phase aside from running around the map during the 20 second buy phase to scavenge leftover bricks, and in a world where the boss phases have no timer and provide plenty of cover for safety, there isn't a huge need to empty all of your mags when you can instead take things a little slower and enter the next set of onslaught waves with half of your heavy left over. And even if you do feel like enemies are overrunning your position in the boss fight a little bit, there are plenty of spots at the back to hide out in while you regroup to let your super recharge or let your teammates wait out their respawn timers. Staying in the Pyramid Portal territory, the rift sections that occur on every round ending in 6 can be absolutely trivialized with an invis hunter grabbing the spark and flying through everything unnoticed for a quick and safe dunk. What's not particularly safe though is the random mines augments, completely wiping your team if they tick to zero while being rather difficult to defuse due to the mini boss ogres or brigs that that guard them. In these situations, having a player with invisibility, strand suspend, stasis freeze, or a disorienting grenade launcher is fantastic for sprinting out to the mines at the beginning of the wave, crowd controlling the guards as you capture them, and then regrouping with your squad afterwards who are hanging back at the ADU to defend while you are out in the field disarming. The crowd control tactic is so effective because you don't even have to actually worry about killing the guard on the mine, as you can simply deal with them at the end of the round once you've cleaned up the regular wave spawn of enemies that will actually push your ADU. And for that matter, it's generally good to just decide on a dedicated player of your fire team to always be the one to go out and take care of far away augments or bonus objectives like the shielded sky bombers, capture points, and so on and so forth. One of the easiest ways to wipe is to be uncoordinated to the point where all three players on the team sprint out to rush the mines, leaving no one behind to defend the ADU and losing 50% of its HP before you've even realized what has happened. And if you want teammates that you can actually coordinate with, who you know will also have good builds and have likely also seen this same tips video, look for a squad to run with in the LFG channel of my Discord server linked in the description down below. If you want more Onslaught builds, tips, or even want to come run a Wave 50 with me, stop by my live stream at twitch.tv slash Mactix. I'll see you over there. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.